Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on conducting a Levine's test using Microsoft Excel. Typically, when we think of the Levine's test of homogeneity of variances, we think of SPSS. For example, when conducting an ANOVA in SPSS, it's quite easy to add the Levine's test simply by clicking a checkbox under the Options menu. However, it is possible to conduct a Levine's test using Excel, although it's a bit more complex. So first I want to show you how the data would be formatted for SPSS. So you can see I have here two columns. And in the first column I have two levels of one independent variable, control and treatment. So I have one independent variable here and then a score in column B. So this could be copy and pasted or imported directly to SPSS and a, a one-way ANOVA could be performed and the Levine's test could be conducted as part of that ANOVA. When conducting the Levine's test in Excel, the data have to be formatted a little differently. So you can see I have a label control and a label treatment and then the corresponding scores in that same column. So before we get started with the steps, I want to show you what you'll need to run uh, an ANOVA uh, toward the end of this analysis that will give us the result for the Levine's test. And under data, you can see I have a data analysis option available. If you don't have this enabled in uh, your workbook, just go to File, Options, Add-ins. Down here you'll see it says Excel Add-ins, just select Go or click Go. And you want to make sure that Analysis Toolpack is checked off. Of course, on mine it already was. And then you'll have access to this. We'll need this in just a few minutes. So let's get started with the calculations we'll need to complete the Levine's test. First, we're going to need to compute the means for both groups. And to do this in Excel, we'll use the average function. So it'll be average. And then we're going to want all the scores in the control group. So A2 through A31. And I'm going to click F4 here to make these absolute references. And you can see the control mean is 50.7. All you need to do now is just autofill this down since they're absolute references for every case. So the control mean for every case is recorded for every case, and it is 50.7. So we'll do the same thing for the treatment mean. Now one shortcut you could do here is just to autofill right. And where it says A, you can change that to B. Or you can drag the selection over. Uh, you'd have to change, if you want to do it the first way, you'd have to change the A to B for both uh, A2 and A31. And then we'll autofill this mean down as well. And now we need to calculate the difference between the score and the mean for the control group. And again, we'll do the same thing for the treatment group. But we want the absolute value of the difference. So in Excel, that's ABS. And we'll take the control score and subtract the control mean. You can see that's the difference. And we're just going to autofill that all the way down. So there's all the differences for the individual cases between the scores and the mean for all the cases. We're going to do the same thing for treatment difference. So again, ABS, absolute value. This time I'll select B2 
and subtract E2. So you can see that's the absolute value of the difference for this first case. And I'm going to auto fill this down. So the only step we have left now is to conduct an ANOVA that examines the difference between these two groups. So the result of that ANOVA will be the same as the result of the Levine's test. So go into Data Analysis and select ANOVA Single Factor. So by default it's grouped by columns, which we do have it grouped by columns. And then we do have labels in the first row and we want the alpha set at 0 0.05. So the input range would be F1 all the way down through G31. And then we want to select an output range. Let's make that I10. Well, let's move up a little further up. Let's make that I3. And now we're set up for the ANOVA, so we'll just press OK. Fix the spacing here a little bit. So you can see the control difference is one group, and the treatment difference is the other group. And it's important to keep in mind, this is what we are comparing. We ran the ANOVA with these groups. So this isn't an ANOVA run against the original variables, like control versus treatment. This is an ANOVA comparing the means of the control difference and the treatment difference. The control difference column contains the absolute value of the difference between each score and the mean for all the scores, and the treatment difference contains the absolute value between the treatment scores and the treatment mean for all the scores. So these are the two groups we are comparing. And you can see that we have an F value of 7.247647, which is the same F value that we would get if we ran this through SPSS, and a P value of 0 0.009264, which again is the same as we would see in SPSS. So in this case, we would reject the null hypothesis of the Levine's test. The null hypothesis says that the variances are homogeneous, so we would say that they are not homogeneous. So we reject the null hypothesis and assume that we have violated the assumption of homogeneity of variances. I want to provide you with just one last reminder that if you're going to use SPSS for this calculation, you want your data formatted this way, uh, as I introduced in the beginning of the video. I hope you found this video on conducting a Levine's test using Microsoft Excel to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.